Literally, the battery camera just went out. Don't tell anyone on the podcast, though. All right, here we go. Let's pick this up from where I was just at. Let's cut that right there. No, I don't want to. No, 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 no. I don't want to close. Cancel. Take this and cut. All right, here we go. Which is, I was so sensitive to chemicals in all of my cosmetics, and so I went ahead and made this all natural, anti aging, organic, non GMO, non dairy, non whatever dirt, <laughs> which has to come down to eventually because there's so many nons. Uh, but if, essentially, it's the same story as everyone else. And I know that's a horrible thing to say because everyone says, hey, this is my organic, this is my unique story, this was what started my business, is I was, uh, you know, allergic or had these reactions to all these chemicals and things like that, and that's great. But you need a unique spin. You need a unique, this is for everyone, this is a, you need a unique story, or you need a unique twist on your unique story. You need something that's going to stand out from everyone else that thinks they're unique. Okay, so like, for my landscaping business, Everybody thinks they have the right price, great quality, and are very personable. Now, how do I convince my, how do I market to my audience, to my consumer, and convince them that I am somehow unique in comparison to all the other competitors that are telling them the exact same thing? Now, that's my story. But, Sharday, you need to find out what your story is, and I don't think it is just that you want to have an all-natural solution for your cosmetics and cream that you put on your skin. That may have been the cause, but you need something that's going to stick out, something that's going to give purpose and mission to your business, okay? And the reason is because it's kind of like Tom's shoes. Everyone's heard of Tom's shoes. They, you know, if you buy a pair of shoes, they, they donate a, another pair to a child in Africa that needs shoes. Great story. There's hundreds of businesses that use that model now. And it's because marketers ruin everything. Like once it started working for Tom's, there was just everyone else jumped on the bandwagon went everyone else jumped on the bandwagon and it wasn't because they had a mission or they had some unique spin. Now it was because they had some ulterior motive which was more sales. Okay, so marketers in time ruin everything. Everything that works eventually will get ruined by marketers because it gets overused. So you got to find something unique. Some, what's your spin on things? So Shardé, that's the first thing, like your general, because uh, there's, there's literally hundreds and thousands of these types of creams. And so you got to figure out what makes you separate, different, all of that, okay? That being said, there's really two different directions you can go here. <clears throat> One, you can go retail. And when I say retail, I don't mean open your own store. Okay, if you have more questions about that, listen to episode 120 where I kind of de dismantle that idea. So one, you can go retail. Two, is you can go online. Okay, so if you go retail, what you're going to have to do is deal with a lot of people saying no. And you're going to go to all sorts of buyers for big box stores or mid-level type of chain stores, cosmetics, Rite Aid, whatever. You're going to go to all of them. And you're going to be willing to accept 100 no's before you get one yes. But that one yes will be the, the, the launching point for your business. And you'll get a million in sales. After maybe a couple years of beating down doors, asking for the sale, calling, getting, get, trying to set up appointments with the buyers from these places. That's tough work, okay? But it can be a huge success. The other option is to do it a little more grassroots stuff. Create a YouTube channel around your product, around cosmetics. Uh, create, and not, not just talk about your, your product, but talk about all sorts of all natural type, like you should become the all natural cosmetics pro. And uh, if you do that, then you should say, hey, like I have my own products and I'll, you can buy them from me. 
and people that have become come to know, like, and trust you will buy from you because of you, not because of the product, because your product no doubt has so many different competitors and comparable products, they aren't buying the cream. They're buying the brand, okay? For everyone out there, they're not buying your service, your product, the little thing that you make, the product, whatever it is. They don't buy the product. They buy the brand. And if you can focus on that, you'll focus more on your branding and your brand image instead of what your brand is trying to sell, whether it be service or product-based businesses. So Sade, that's the kind of the two different directions you can go. One is, you know, pound down the pavement, get into people's face, you know, don't mind rejection, cold calling, cold emailing, walking into people's offices, uh, mooching, giving gifts, giving free stuff, and relentlessly following up with buyers from these big stores. Or you can go online, create a channel, YouTube, video, create an account, become the the expert, the evaluator. Like, you know how many YouTube channels are around uh, reviews? Like, for phones and for, for technology stuff. You can become the reviewer for all sorts of all-natural cosmetics. Okay? And it doesn't even have to include your products. You just got to become the expert, the authority in your market, in your industry, and when people want to buy or need, they have a need, they will come to you because they know, like, and trust you. And that's who people buy from, is people they know, like, and trust. And so if you can develop and cultivate those three things in your tribe, in your following, on your YouTube channel, on your Instagram followers, if you can do all of that, to where people know, like, and trust you because you give them free content. You're not commercial. You're not trying to always sell, sell, sell. You actually are trying to provide free value. Okay, like if you go to a landscape business course and you sign up for the webinar, I'm not trying to sell you for 90% of that webinar. I am just offering 100% free value to the people who get on that webinar on how to grow their business, how to make it a scalable model, and, and, and really learning from my experience in service-based businesses and exactly how I did it. 90% is free, great content, okay? 10% of it, I sell at the end. People don't have to buy, I don't put pressure on them. And that's how it should be with you. When you create a tribe, when you create an audience, you provide lots and lots of value. And then you say, okay, I have products and stuff and that's great if you wanna support me. And if you want additional information and you want like the, the, the 10 hour version of this one hour webinar or video on YouTube, go for it and they're gonna buy. And if they don't, great. Like you, got, you were able to provide value to someone. If you could focus on that, you will be successful. So that's kind of my advice to you, Sade. Go one of those two directions. The more fancy, kind of cool thing to do is go after the big box stores, but it could take a long time. It could take a lot of rejection. I'm not saying you're not cut out for it. I suggest you go either way. That's my suggestion to you. In fact, you can go both directions. While you're trying to go after the Rite Aids of the world and going after the buyers of the big stores that are going to order $100,000 worth of your product, you can also be creating this YouTube channel, you can create the Instagram account, and you become the expert in your field. Foodfortheskin.com, that's your website, Sharday. Everyone check it out. This is Mike Andes on the Business Bootcamp Podcast. If you have a question on how to start, grow, or save your business, send a 30-second video to Business Bootcamp Podcast at gmail.com. This is Mike Andes, episode 121 on the Business Bootcamp Podcast, signing off.